Welcome to Illini Drive on 1071 WPGU. I'm your host, Brendan Jones, joined with Gabby Hyduke, who is filling in for Nithin today, could not be on the show. Um, Gabby, everybody knows Gabby. Uh, she's a producer for Tuesday, Thursday, talks with Josh a lot. Speaking of Josh, me and Josh were in here yesterday, if you were listening. Uh, sorry that the show cut off halfway through. Um, I guess a transformer outside of Joe's exploded. What's that, like? Just south of Fifth and Green. Yeah. Um, it was scaring. Yeah, look on, I think Illini Bar still has it. Yeah. Exploded. Um, so for a few seconds, pretty much, I don't know, we went off air, I feel like. Um, so, yeah, there's been a lot of electrical issues throughout uh, campus. Um, me and Gabby are victims of it. I'm trying to figure that out now. But, yeah, um, glad to be back. Glad to talk. It actually, it actually shut off right when me and Josh were talking about NFL. Really? And I was talking about the Steelers. Um, Worse. Yeah, Worse. so it is what it is. But, yeah, we have a exciting day. Today is National Signing Day. Um, Gabby just finished a story about who all uh, signed to Illinois today. Um, Gabby, how are you feeling about it? I feel like it was a good day um, for Illinois athletics as a whole. Obviously, National signing period started today. Today's like technically National Signing Day um, for the fall. So a lot of athletes tend to sign on this day. Um, you have kind of the bigger um, bigger recruits in sports like basketball um, who kind of waited out and wait till the spring. We saw that with Adam Miller last year. He waited to the spring while Andre Corbello and Coleman Hawkins both signed in the fall. So these aren't like finalized um list by any means or anything we talk about isn't finalized like these are the only recruits they have um but yeah i think it was a good day i'll we can start off with men's basketball um luke goody verbaled in the spring i think Mm -hmm. or early summer he's a four-star wing from indiana i want to say yeah fort wayne fort wayne um he's the lone commit of the 2021 class for brad underwood so far by the looks of it, or what was what Underwood was saying today, a bunch of coaches had like a little press conference thing. Underwood kind of alluded to that this class isn't finished, and there's some guys that they feel really good about that are waiting until the spring. Um, so that obviously, you know, gives you some hope because we've talked about me and Josh have obviously talked about it a lot. Um, just a lack of success on the recruiting trail this fall Mm -hmm. but they are in the mix for ty ty washington who won't be announcing his decision um until november 15th so just a few days from now i guess um so we'll see what underwood can do but i probably wouldn't anticipate them picking anybody up until the spring probably Mm -hmm. um they're obviously looking at mac etn the big big guy um to hopefully succeed uh, to see Kofi. So, yeah, that's what we're looking at, men's basketball. I feel pretty good about Luke. Yeah, Luke Goody's, I mean, 6'7", uh, can really, really shoot, can also handle the ball. Um, so you like to see it. Also, speaking of men's basketball, just finalized the um, bragging rights game against Missouri, which is December 12th, 13th, one of those days. Um, they still haven't decided where they're going to play it. Uh but yeah, hopefully. Do you see how they're deciding it? Yeah, a coin flip. They're doing a coin flip tomorrow, like virtually, to see if it'll be play. I love it. Which I don't get that because Oh well, I guess it's not it it's never mind. I got confused. It's technically in Missouri every year, but it's in St. Louis. Um mm. I just got confused. I was like, Oh, last year they were in Missouri, but completely irrelevant. But yeah, I think that's kind of a cool way to do it. Yeah, I like it. I know Ayodesumu is Illinois' representative on the virtual coin toss. Who gets to who gets to toss it? Does Io do? Who, I don't know. It'd be funny if one of like the players got to I toss think, it. I think I think they're gonna have the someone. Double sided coin. Like a mediator type of person. Mm. Um but yeah, let's move on to women's basketball. My favorite team to talk about. Um, Nancy Faye coming into her fourth year, third, third year, fourth year, third year. Fourth. Fourth year. Fourth. At Illinois. Um, Sorry. I was thinking hard. Yeah, no, I really, I, yeah, I had to think um, how many years she had before we kind of covered her. Um, But she had a big recruit. Mm -hmm. She has two recruits right now. Um, Three. 
three. Eleven minutes ago, they signed Jayla Odin. Oh, from Baltimore, Maryland. Well, now three. Um, five nine were, guard. Five nine guard. Okay, their biggest recruit, which this is this is a really good get. Uh, mm-hmm. for Nancy Fay. Is I don't want to say her name wrong. Adalia, I think. Adalia. Adalia. I'd probably say Adalia. Okay. It could be. We'll Adalia. say Adalia. We'll see. When Adalia she comes McKenzie to um, of Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. According to Prep Girls Hoops, which is just like the big mm-hmm. high school ranking system for women's basketball, she's the number one recruit in Minnesota coming out for 2021. Yeah, she's good. Um, I know when they got that commitment last year, we talked about it a little bit. Um, I watched some of her film because I think we talked about her on the podcast. I think we did too. Uh, yeah, watched some of her film. She's really good in transition. Um, she's a very, very good scorer. I think she her junior year, which would have been last season, um, she scored like 25 points a game. Uh, 30. 30. Ooh, 30 bomb. Uh, so she's a bucket. So it's it'll be nice to have her um, come in and be able to score. Uh, and then also like Minnesota is a very uh, it's it's a lot. There's a lot of women's basketball competition in Minnesota. Um, so you know you love to have somebody who's you know played in those big moments, played against you know top recruits, uh, come to Illinois, which you love to see. Yeah, I mean one of Illinois's Illinois bas- women's basketballs. Um, top players in recent history, especially Alex Whittinger. She came from Minnesota. Mm-hmm. Um, so definitely a, a nice little pipeline there. Um, but, yeah, she's me super exciting to see. 5'10", guard, uh, pretty good size for a women's basketball guard, I would say. So I'm excited to see what she's going to bring. And then the other one I wrote about um, was Keanu Rember of, uh, I can't even, Rally, how do you say Rally? Raleigh. 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 I, I hate that city. I love Raleigh. I just hate the name. Never been. But Never I love been. The name. I, love I just Raleigh. hate the name. Um, North Carolina. That's where Jada Peebles, um, sophomore guard, is from. Where so Jay Cole's from. Also, Jay Cole. I guess maybe she knows Jay Cole. Um, right. But Kiana's a six foot two forward. Um, she totaled four hundred forty three points and two hundred seventy five rebounds and sixty seven blocks mm-hmm. in her junior season. So she's definitely more of a defensive player and more of just like a nice body to have in the paint. Mm-hmm. Um, something that Nancy Faye has lacked in her first couple years at Illinois. Obviously now on the roster, they have a couple bigger um, inside presences, which will be good. So it's nice to see her kind of trying to continue this into 2021. Um, so yeah, I, I really like this class. Um, yeah. It's three a person good class. class. You, you know, who knows you might add another, might add a tra- transfer, grad mm-hmm. transfer, at the end of the season, who knows down the line. Um, but I think she's off to a really good start. I think the shows the two assistants that she hired from Marquette um, are really paying off for her. So I'm excited. I think I've talked about it a ton, obviously. I, you and I have talked about it a ton. Um, I think the women's basketball program here is definitely going to take a step in the right direction this season. Um, no one should expect them to come out and like win the Big Ten mm-hmm. or even be in the top of the Big Ten. But I think... Things are moving in the right direction for Nancy Faye. Um, and especially on the recruiting front, obviously getting the top player in Minnesota is huge. So right, right, right. Shout out Nancy Faye. We can move to softball baseball. Um, my computer is being weird. Um, softball baseball. So softball, um, welcome to five person class. That's kind of not small, Tyra Perry said, but. Uh, I go to Tyra Perry of the softball team is amazing. Um, she said they were looking to recruit like eight mm-hmm. players, but because of COVID and everything and like roster size, because every spring sport um, athlete gets like an extra year of eligibility, not just seniors. So like moving down the line, roster sizes for the next several years are going to be really weird mm-hmm. for spring sports and softball only gets 12 full scholarships to divide among you know, a 25-ish person team. Right. So they kind of had to minimize their group this year. But the person that sticks out probably to everybody is Zoe Howard, who is daughter of former Illini football star Dana Howard. Mm. Um, so that's exciting. Tyra Perry kind of talked a little bit about that today, how the recruiting process was her, for her was especially fun. And you'd love to just see that connection. Her mom went to Illinois, too. Uh, so just... I like that. You know, just like continuing that right, right, right. path and you just know it's going to be a player who like bleeds 
Yeah. Orange and blue. Love it. But yeah, softball, they added, they didn't add any pitchers, um, which they have six on the roster now, so it's not surprising. But they really went for like the offensive approach. Mm -hmm. Um, All these girls have really big bats, really good offensive presence. So I'm excited to see what they can do. Um, I also just love Tyra Perry. Mm -hmm. I think she's an amazing coach. Um, Move on to baseball. Dan Hartlib got eight players today. Baseball just recruits so much. Yeah. Like, there's so many guys on that team. Yeah, for real. Another kind of Illinois or U of I connection. Brandon Comia, the, oh, God, second base, right? Yeah, second baseman. Second baseman at Illinois had a really outstanding first several games last spring before things got canceled. His cousin, who's an outfielder from Indiana, Jared Comia, um, committed to Illinois and Dan Hartlib was pretty impressed with him as well. Um, but you get three right-handed pitchers, which is big because Illinois' pitching is strong right now, but it, they obviously yeah, lost you want, yeah. their two biggest guys in Ty Weber and Garrett Acton last season. So you're looking to fill holes um, in the coming seasons. Um, so three right-handed pitchers that Hartlib said today he thinks all have the ability to come in and pitch right away. That's mm-hmm. really exciting because – you know, usually with college baseball, it might take like a year to kind of fit into a system or fit into a role. But the fact that he kind of sees this with all these players um, is a really big deal. So I'm excited for Hartlib. Um, volleyball. Yeah, I saw, what, three? Three. Three from volleyball, outside hitter, libero slash defensive specialist, and middle blocker, outside hitter. So a nice mix. Um, I think volleyball is kind of on the weaker side when it comes to defensive specialists and libero right now because Mm -hmm. they obviously lost Morgan O'Brien and Caroline Welsh after last season. So I think that's a good good get. Um, Shout out Chris Thomas. Can't wait to watch them play in the spring. Um, And then we obviously don't know too much about the next couple sports, soccer, track and cross country, wrestling. Um, Soccer got five signees and track and cross country got a combined seven while wrestling has just two there's just not as much like information on yeah, them out yeah, yeah. there as you know a basketball or or a baseball when they're kind of being recruited from like the youngest of ages but i think i think illinois athletics should feel pretty good yeah i think they got a good amount of of recruits for every team um Obviously, you want to see basketball grow a little bit. Mm-hmm. We know that they've been struggling um, to kind of have those recruits in the past few months since the, the pandemic started. But, you know, it's, I mean, it, it's nice to see some people filling out, uh, especially when you look at places like, you know, softball and volleyball who are really good and go under the radar because of they're just not, you know, revenue sports. It's nice to see that they're getting those those opportunities um, to kind of publicize their signing day. So you love to see it. Um, that'll bring us to our first break. When we come back, we got to dive deep into this Illinois Rutgers preview. Um, not going to be fun, but it is what it <laughs> is. Let's talk about Illinois football when we get back on Line I Drive 107. WPG. <laughs> Welcome back to Line I Drive on 107. WPGU. Illinois football is 0-3 uh, for the first time since 1997. They finished that season winless, 0-11. Um, might be looking that way for this season. Not only are they losing these games, it doesn't really even seem like they're in competition uh, through three games with the exception of a little bit of the end of the game with Purdue. Um, they are headed to – where is Rutgers? I'm, I sound so stupid right now. Where is it located? It's – it's in the northeast. New Jersey. New Jersey. That's exactly where it's okay. Rutgers is located in New yeah. Jersey. That is where Illinois will travel this weekend uh, to play the Scarlet Knights. Uh, Rutgers one and two. They beat Michigan State in their first game of the season, thirty-eight to twenty-seven. Since then, they have taken two hard losses to Indiana, who is ranked number seventeen, and Ohio State, who is ranked number three. Sorry, I was looking at rankings. Um, yeah, it's, we've been over this a thousand times. This is now my third day in a row talking about Illinois football. Um, sorry. 
No, it's okay. I mean, it's my job. It's my job to to come through and tell them that, or tell the viewers that, or listeners that they are not good. Um, yes. This is a scary one. Rutgers obviously isn't at the top of the Big Ten by any means, uh, but they're competitive. They beat Michigan State by 11 points. They scored 21 on Indiana, and they scored 27 on Ohio State. Uh, this is a team that can score if you let them, and Illinois loves to let people score. Uh, so that is a scary game, or that is a scary you know, thought when coming against this Illinois defense that has been so, so bad through three games. Um they also they let up a lot of points, which is another good thing. They allow 411 yards a game, um, so that could be a plus for the Illini. But at the end of the day, come Saturday, we still don't really know who's the quarterback's going to be. Uh, you're hoping Isaiah Williams is back because he has finished. I'm assuming sometime this week he finished his 14 day quarantine. That mm-hmm. that was because, yeah, he's back in practice. Right, so he's back in practice. Karan Taylor had a very bad performance on Saturday, so you'd have to expect that now with the second string back. Four string kind of takes back his place and on the bench. Um, Matt Robinson, you still don't know what's up with his injury. He did not mm-hmm. play Saturday, but it didn't seem like it was that devastating of an injury. Significant, no. And obviously, if it was like a season ender or whatever, they probably you would told us. Yeah. Um, so he might be in the mix come this week. Uh, so you're going to have a quarter, a slight quarterback battle with three guys. Um, but these three guys, I don't really have confidence in. We Isaiah Williams was a was a was a really good recruit. He's fantastic with his legs. We haven't seen him put together any complete passing performance. Mm-mm. Granted, he hasn't played a lot. Um, coming being that he was just a freshman just last year. Uh, and he redshirted. And he redshirted. He only played in like a couple games, maybe. Matt Robinson is a quarterback that you love to have as a backup, but you're not really confident can go out there and start and win you a game. Mm-hmm. Karan Taylor's been up and down in his two performances. So, as I've said, <laughs> as I wrote about on Saturday, as I say every day, this Illinois offense through three games doesn't have an identity, and they won't have one this week because they have are going to presumably have a whole other quarterback. Um, good thing, though, is they get Doug Kramer back. Yes. They get Doug Kramer so, back. James McCourt as well. James McCourt as well. You get some of the guys back that have been in quarantine since just after the first game. Um, so that's a good thing. Your your line fills out a little bit more. People have had to play out of position. Mm-hmm. Um, you're hoping that you get Nate Hobbs back. You're hoping that you get Marquez Beeson back. Obviously, we won't know that probably until Saturday. Um, but if that happens, the defense is still not going to be great, but people will be able to play in their natural position. Um, you saw people you know, not have the best performances because they're out of position, but it is it is what it is. Um, that's what happens when you lose two guys and then Derek Smith hits a targeting penalty on a late hit. Uh, so, yeah, I, Gabby, first reactions to this game, kind of just threw out who's going to be out there, but first reaction to this game, what are you thinking as Illinois goes to New Jersey? I'm nervous. Um, I think in any other year, you're like, oh, Rutgers, easy win. Mm-hmm. Mark that in the win column. No, not this year. Um, not Rutgers, <laughs> not right now. Um, Rutgers has been playing well. Um, they competed with Ohio State, mm-hmm. one of the best teams in the country, which is impressive. Ohio State led up 27 points, which is significant for Ohio State. Uh, obviously, they didn't pull up the upset. Who would expect them to? But they're a pretty talented team. Uh They average 176 passing yards and 122 rushing yards per game. Mm -hmm. Um, So they're averaging about 300 yards per game. You did mention they do like to give up a lot of yards, but Minnesota and Purdue both have shaky defenses that also like to give up a lot of yards, and and Illinois couldn't put up scores on them. I mean, look at Minnesota. They were coming in to Illinois – as one of the worst defenses in the Big Ten, and they shut Illinois down to 14 points on their home field. I mean, this Illinois offense just isn't producing right now. And obviously a lot of that goes back to the whole quarterback situation. Um, having your four-string quarterback out there is an ideal, and you're not going to put up what Brandon Peters could put up. Um, but you still need to be able to do something, especially in the run game. Mike Epstein had a tremendous game last week, um, but it was kind of – overshadowed by the loss in the kind of <laughs> horrific play by everybody else yeah, yeah. Um, during that game. So you don't feel great going into Rutgers. Um, 
Rutgers defense is giving you the ability to put up points, but like I said, like this offense just isn't doing that. Um, as a defense, I'm a little worried, to be honest. Rutgers can also put up yards, um, especially on the ground. In Illinois, how many yards did they let? Like 300 rushing yards. Rushing yards. Against Minnesota. Um, 224 of those came from the running back, uh, Muhammad Ibrahim. The other came from other running backs and the quarterback. Yeah, it. look, it is what it is with that situation. It's, it's, it's hard because through two games, the Wisconsin and Purdue game, the D-line was a lot better than you expected. They kind of came back to what we expected them to be preseason against Purdue. Um, and the Big Ten is has really good running attacks, right? They have mm-hmm. good running attacks. And if the the main thing that I saw on Saturday was that after the running back, we'd get past the first level. The second level is supposed to come and help and, and, and make those tackles. There were a lot of missed tackles on Saturday. Love you talked about it. Everybody asked about it. So you have to ask yourself, is that going to be a problem again? You'd hope it's not if you get, you know, people back in their natural position. He claims it's not. It was a problem. In Purdue. It was a problem it, against Purdue too. Yeah. It's look. It is what it is. If this is the if this is the defense that we'll we'll have to see because we still don't we still haven't you know had a defense have a good game. Mm-hmm. Um, offense we still don't know what to look for week to week. It's hard, but it's also it's just tough to feel confident in any of these games that Illinois plays in. Hundred percent. Because they're just and I talked about this with Nathan on Monday and with. Josh yesterday is that it's just a really tough situation because it seems like there are definitely people that that this coronavirus situation in in college football in the Big Ten especially it's hampering them right Mm -hmm. you look at teams like Penn State right who is off to a really bad start even though they're probably better than their 0-3 record Iowa is off to a tough start right and then there's teams benefiting you know from this situation um, in Northwestern uh, so it's it's kind of evening out, right? There's there's yeah. this middle tier of the Big Ten where pretty much twelve teams are in, which you kind of feel confident anybody can really beat anybody. Yeah. Um, and then at the very top, it's Ohio State, who is is Ohio right, State right? They're they're national championship contenders for a reason. On the bottom of that, the fourteenth team is Illinois. I yeah. they're really bad, and you really don't see. It's tough because you you can't go into a game anymore feeling confident, yeah. right? Like even in it, I don't know if I've been in, sat before a game and felt confident. Right, I felt confident that things would happen. I never felt confident they would win. No. Um, you kind of hope for it in in Purdue, but then an hour before the game, the news comes out that however many people are out, and then you're like, okay, what is going to happen? We saw what happened. Uh, you don't really feel confident against uh, Minnesota this past week because we know what that defense has put up so far. Uh, Illinois' defense has put up so far, and we don't really know what we're going to get from the offense. I don't know if there's a game for the rest of the season that you feel confident or comfortable in. It's going to be it's – a, it's, a, it's a tough next, what, five, six weeks for Illinois football. It is, and it's frustrating because there's so much potential on the team. Mm-hmm. Or at least I think there is. We thought, I, yeah. I still believe there is. I don't think – that this team is bad. I think they're playing really bad. I think the coaching is really bad right now. Uh, But I don't think the individual players are bad. I think there's a lot of individually talented players, but they're not coming together. They're not getting this down. Like, Mm -hmm. there's not a collective energy out there. Um, And obviously you can blame COVID. You can blame all these people out, but... If you're going to be a Power 5 Big Ten football team, you need to have backups who are strong and backups that can compete and backups who can step in and be competitive and win games. You can't just win games by having a solid starting group and then completely fall off on the bench. Because then things like this happen. A bunch of other college football teams are still winning who have starters out. I just They're not finding the group, especially on defense. You have... I don't think there's one big defensive player. Mm-mm. Most of those guys are out were offensive players. Exactly. I mean, obviously, Nate Hobbs is a loss, but he didn't play that well over the first two no, games. not really at all. And not saying that you're not better off without him. You're better off with him. Mm-hmm. He's a great player. But 
this defense isn't depleted like the offense is. So I can give the offense a little slack, a little, because I get the four-string quarterback. As much as Cron Taylor excited us in that game against Purdue, he's a four-string. You know, he put up a bad performance against Minnesota. You kind of had to anticipate that was going to happen. But this defense is full of starters right. who have had hype around them, who have said themselves that they're really good, have, you know, praised themselves, praised the defense as a whole. Like, where is that? Like, where's the pass rush? Where is the tight coverage? Where's the not blown coverage? Where are the tackles? Like, <laughs> Where filling in the gaps and being in your spot, none of that is there right now. They're straight up getting outworked in every area of the defense when every area of the defense has potential talent. This game is important for two reasons, right? This is a team that's beatable. This isn't Ohio State that you have to face. This isn't what Northwestern looks to be. Um, you have to face them at the end of the season, right? This is a team that's beatable. It's it's Rutgers, right? And this is Illinois. You're getting some players back. You're getting you, you have to find momentum somewhere cuz I feel like if you lose this game, it's a, it's a winless season. There's not a lot to fight for. 368 days since Illinois last won a football game against Michigan State. That amazing comeback that in all reality they probably shouldn't have won in the first place. Uh it's a year and some change. Man, that hurts, right? Mm-hmm. To think about and you really have to sit this team down and be like, look, man, like, what are we out there fighting for? Yeah. This was a team that everybody thought was going to be good, was going to be really a middle good. of the tier team or middle tier team in the Big Ten, like maybe a tier or two below the top Big Ten teams, Wisconsin, Ohio State. Mm-hmm. Nobody thought this team was going for a Big Ten championship, but people thought that this was going to, that last year was a turning point. This year would obviously be weird. Um, but that they would fight through some sort of adversity because that's what they did all last year was fight through adversity Mm -hmm. to get wins, Wisconsin, Michigan State. So you look at this team and and you you have to ask yourself, like, what's what's our identity? Because three weeks in, you don't know. And it's about to be a fourth week that if you don't find some sort of identity, you won't know. And that's half the season. And Lovey talked a lot about after Saturday, it's like, look, it's three games, it's – it's it's early in the season. You're almost it's halfway just, into your like, season. Love you got to realize, man, it's halfway through the season. You're one game away from half. You are. And and I understand that three games in, like, this would be the first. Like, in a normal season, your fourth game, that's the first Big Ten season game, right? That's when the season, like, actually starts. That's when stuff really matters. You're halfway through the season. Yeah. And you haven't shown anything. And, no. and you know, I don't know this because you have to find some if you're lovey you have to sit down and be like how do we win two games because if you have if you're winless or you win one game man the future's in jeopardy oh yeah future's in jeopardy for lovey the future's in jeopardy for people who want to transfer the recruits are going to be bad for the next few years you have to figure out a way to to look at least you know of a sliver of what you thought you were going to be competitive you look competitive and this is the game that they have to do it, right? This is the game they have mm-hmm. to come out and say, look, it is Rutgers, but they're better than us. Mm-hmm. They can they can no longer think that they're better than any than other team anybody. in the Big Ten because they're not. They're the worst team in the Big Ten. So they have to really look at themselves and be like, all right, we have to give our own energy. I know there's no fans, but look, these seniors, these these older guys, they they're used to playing and no fans. I mean, we've been in we've been in Champagne when it's not a big game. Yeah, you know, like I went to that Iowa game my freshman year that they got blown out zero to sixty three, and I left during halftime. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> so I'm not, you know, like in last and year that Northwestern just, game. You know, it's like yeah, this, and it's just every other Big Ten team is doing the same thing as you, right? You know exactly. what I mean? And that's I why think, there's no excuse for me because no people always like, and I'm sure like at the end of the season people look back and be like, look how weird this was. Right, like this and that. And it it's is weird, weird for everybody, it's, it's and I, weird, I do understand but... it is weird for everybody. It's weird for you, especially because you don't know that what's going to happen to this day or this day. Somebody mm-hmm. could tomorrow test positive for coronavirus on the team, and it just mess everything up. Or somebody could have had a close contact with somebody that's mm-hmm. not even on the team, and now they have to quarantine. Stuff like that. Everybody in the nation is facing that situation, so you can't say, "Oh, poor me," because of yeah. this, because y'all decided to play football. And y'all decided to accept the risks and the challenges and the everything that came and with it. They wanted to play, and football. you wanted to play football, and that's fair. That's your, that's what you want to do for. That's what you like do for a living with these coaches. That's what a lot of these players want to do for a living after college. That's what a lot of these players love to do during college. 
come play. Yeah. Play football. Right. If you go, if you say you say all summer you want to play football, then play football. Right. And there's no excuse. Everybody's in these situations, you know. So Saturday's a great opportunity for y'all to show up and do something that you haven't done these past three weeks. Yeah, I think Saturday is the big potential turning point for this season, not the program at all. But if you want to at least try and turn this season around, you need to win Saturday. Mm-hmm. And I think everybody knows that. I, that's not a secret. That's not like a hot take. You need to win this weekend to at least try and turn the corner on the season. After this game, you only have four games left of the regular season. Then you have the one game, little Big Ten playoff thing, whatever they're doing. Um, You have Saturday to turn it around because if you don't, the season's over. Lovey's job might be over. And then you might have to go through another five to six years of trying to retransform a whole program go through the same two- to three-year period of just absolutely being horrible, like we saw in kind of like 2017 yeah. era, just absolutely getting dominated by every team you face. I don't want to do that again. They need to figure this out because I don't want to do that again. Okay. I'm graduating next I don't want to. I don't want to <laughs> sit. I don't want to watch another trying to turn the program around. Yeah. Like, And I think a lot... Sure, it's just but week, is it, week four against Rutgers, but a lot lies on this game. Is it necessary to hit the restart, though? Because we've seen I've, these past I'm three not years. saying hit the restart, but if you well, try no, no, and bring no, in like, a new coach. But, but you're right. You're saying is like if, half those if you guys are going to transfer. If you have to bring in a new coach at the end of this season, people transfer. You lose your recruiting base. You're going to have to refigure out a recruiting base. Is that not better then two or three more years of lovey. Maybe we'll get it this year. Maybe we won't. I don't know. I don't and know. I don't have the answer to you. Obviously, I don't want to see the next three years be bottom of the Big Ten um, type talent and type production. But, I mean, it's year five of lovey, and that's what we are right now. So, I don't have the answers. You know, if I if I did, I say this all the time, I'd be coaching. I'd be an athletic director. I'm not a 20-year-old kid host a radio show, but yeah, I don't know. Sorry to leave you on a somber note, but that's just something to ponder in Line on Nation. When we come back, uh, we'll talk about the the rest of college football. A lot has happened this week um, and much more, so stay tuned on Line Drive 1071 WPG. that was i really enjoyed that song yeah i literally just added that song to my yeah me, t- me too me too uh back to football we'll talk about teams that have potential to to not not to win eh, that have already won and have potential to play outside of that last ninth game that's what i'm trying to say yeah ohio state who was slated to play maryland this week um that game has been canceled because of a coronavirus outbreak in the Maryland roster uh, in the program. We've heard nothing about any Ohio State positive cases, which is a good thing for Ohio State as they're the third ranked team in the nation. Um, but wow, that's that's I mean, look, that's that's the reality of what it is. Other games have been canceled, postponed da da da, uh, throughout the nation, throughout the Big Ten. Um, the Big Ten is weird because they don't have any room to reschedule. So if a game is done, it's done. Um, so by the end of the regular season, so so that ninth game, right? Mm-hmm. Between if it's between the Big Ten West and Big Ten East, number one, yeah. that's the Big Ten Championship, right? Yes. Okay. So aside from the Big Ten Championship, so in the regular season, Ohio State will only have had seven games. Mm-hmm. Knock on wood that no other games get canceled yes. uh, for them because you know we obviously want that Big Ten representation. Of course. So there'll be seven games, right? Mm-hmm. Theoretically, they'll be seven and zero going into the Big Ten Championship. I would say so. Say they win the Big Ten Championship, eight and zero. Okay. How much does an eight and zero record affect college football, college football playoffs selection committee when other teams, whether it be in the SEC, whether it be uh, in in the the Big Twelve, mm-hmm. are having like twelve games? How much do you think that matters? I think it. I think it matters if you lose a game. 
Right. If Ohio State loses game, they're done. They have no chance to make it up. Whereas I think if uh, a Clemson and Alabama, you know, lose a game, they have the chance to make it up because mm-hmm. they have a longer schedule. I Which think Clemson if, did lose that game. Yes. So I think, you know, you're not running off Clemson yet um, in the football playoffs. I think the committee this year needs to just really take a look at the what each team has produced every game. Um kind of focus a little less on the record. Like I said, you know, if Ohio State goes out and loses game, they're done. But I think if you look at an 8-0 team versus maybe an 11-1 and team, I would go the 8-0 team based on production and mm-hmm. based on games and based on who they played, things like that. So I think if Ohio State were to just go 8-0 at the end of everything, I still think they'd get selected. Right. Um, just because they're clearly one of the best teams in the country. Mm-hmm. And you you look at, you know, what AP's rankings. Ohio State's still at number three, and I don't see them really budging just because they missed a game due to Maryland having a COVID outbreak. Right. You know what I mean? So I think you have to also focus on what the rankings are doing. Like we see Wisconsin has missed two games now, and they're still ranked at what, number 14? Yeah, they're 14. Um, so I think the rankings can kind of, not completely, but can sort of coincide right, with right, right. what the committee might do. So here's my thing, right? Ohio State beat Penn State at the time they were ranked number 18. Penn State is still undefeated or still unvictorious. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, you think they're going to be better, but they obviously can't finish higher than five and three. Yeah. They're after they play Maryland or Maryland games canceled. The next week, the next game they'll play is Indiana. Um, they are currently ranked 10th in the nation. That's a huge game. That is a huge game. Other than those two games, though, their schedule's kind of not great, right? They had Nebraska. They had Rutgers. Um, Good they old have us. Illinois. <laughs> they have yeah. I-L-L-I-N-I to play um, in Champaign. So maybe, man, hey, 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 come. Maybe it'll be an upset. Maybe we'll get to watch an upset. We will not storm the field like Notre Dame, though. Michigan State after that, and then Michigan. So it's not like they have this crazy tough schedule, right? Not that you need a crazy tough schedule to be in there, but then you're looking at teams, right? Obviously, Alabama was number one. Then you have mm-hmm. Notre Dame, who just beat Clemson um, at number two. Then you have Ohio State. Uh, and then you have Clemson, who is undoubtedly a top four team in the country, yeah. right? Uh, and then you have Especially Cincinnati, when you're losing to another especially when top you're, four right, team right. in the country. Then you have Cincinnati, who's still undefeated. And who is going to play more games than Ohio State? Mm-hmm. So, like you, if you're looking at a time where it's the top five teams in the country are Alabama, Notre Dame, Clemson, Cincinnati, Ohio State. Cincinnati hasn't lost a game mm-hmm. theoretically. All these teams except for Clemson are undefeated to end the game, to end the season. Yeah, it's going to be really, really hard for me to say that they're going to keep Clemson out. So it comes down to Ohio State and Cincinnati. And how do you tell Cincinnati, well, yeah, you were undefeated and you played four more games than Ohio State, but mm, it's Ohio State. Bye. Yeah. I don't know. That's going to be hard, I think. Um, I don't have an answer, nor do I think you do. I think no, I don't we're have a lot both of kind of life. just <laughs> put it, throwing out yeah. different scenarios, but I think it's going to be really hard, and you're going to get a bunch of backlash if you're the college football playoff committee. Um, really would not want to be that group this year. Yeah. On a regular year, it's tough. This year, it's yeah. insane. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how coronavirus affects that in the end of the season. Da da da. A team that will be getting their start since they beat up on the Illini in Week One. Wisconsin. They have not played since what is that? October twenty fourth. Fourth. When they they were the first game of the Big Ten season, put the smack in on the Fighting Illini, uh, forty five to seven. Obviously, a whole bunch of people tested positive right after the game, which was kind of scary for Illinois. Um, a lot of people tested positive. They shut down their program for, what, that two weeks, two, two and a half weeks, basically. Um, they have said that they're going to play this week. Who are they playing? Bad research on my end. God, I just, okay, so I just, I, I was looking at Ohio State's schedule, and then I accidentally pressed on the Illinois Game. No matchup predictor for ESPN. Guess what percent chance Illinois has to win the game against Rutgers against Ohio State. 
Oh, uh, two. One point seven. Wisconsin plays Michigan this weekend. That'd be a fun game. I think it'll be a good game. Um, do we know if Graham Mertz can play yet? Has he cleared the twenty-one days? How long? Okay, so he, he tests positive, positive on, the on Sunday, right? That's or Saturday or Sunday? He said test positive on Saturday, right? Saturday. Quick math. October week, has 30 for 31 days. Uh, carry the Saturday one. is 21 days. So it'll be Sunday would be the earliest he could yes. play. Yes. So he will not be playing, nor will their third string. I think Grammar's is back up to Jack Cohen, um, who I don't think is back yet. And then their third string quarterback also tested positive along with Mertz. So they're going to be on their fourth string quarterback against Michigan. His name's like Vanderboom. One of my, I was texting one of my, uh, Wisconsin friends. Yeah, he you said, did say that. Said something like Vanderboom. Yeah, I was like, what? It's a great name. A lot of backup good... quarterbacks, you know, Trace McSorley, mm-hmm. uh, Ben DiNucci. Ben DiNucci. Um, Vaderboom, I think Duck. it is. Duck Hodges. I don't know. I'll figure that out. We'll obviously see this weekend who plays for Wisconsin. But that's, I mean, that's good for them, right? They, so they've lost two games. So the max number of games they have is seven after their if they say they make it to the Big Ten Championship, which I don't even know how records will work out with that one. Yeah. You have to assume if they go 6-0, and um, they'd be the only team to go 6-0 and in the in the East, or in the West, I mean, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so they'd play Ohio State. So that's just another thing. Like, what if they theoretically beat Ohio State and they're 7-0? and They have one less game than Ohio State. There's no way Wisconsin gets in with just seven games. No. Wild, man. Wild. Wild times we live it's in. It's a crazy time right now. Um, but it's good to see that back, right? It's good to see Wisconsin football back. Yeah. Uh, they they had they had twenty five yeah cases. I'm not sure what was split up between staff and players. I'm pretty sure it was close to like half and a half. Right. Um, they were down at least I think as of Monday or Tuesday, they were down to like five active cases. Mm-hmm. So things you like to see. Um, yeah, it's it's really good to see. Um, obviously, it sucked for them. They had Big yeah. Ten championship hopes. They had national uh, college football playoff hopes. Those are kind of slashed. Not the Big Ten championship hopes are slashed, but you'd have to assume with seven games, even if they're undefeated, it's hard to put it's them in. It's hard to get in. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. It'll be interesting to see for da 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 the Wisconsin Badgers. I was thinking that they were the mascot. Um, more coronavirus news. Bucky Badger. Bucky the Badger. Uh, more coronavirus news. What SEC games are canceled this week? So many. It's like seven were supposed to be played. Now there's only three to be played. Dang. I know that Alabama game's canceled. Alabama LSU, right? Yes. Which was supposed to be LSU had a like the Saturday outbreak. night game. Oh yeah. Which is wild be because LSU already had an outbreak over the summer. Mm-hmm. They already like they said how many like a lot of guys. So you have to assume that if you're on that team. 99% chance you had it. Auburn, Mississippi State also got canceled. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see what else we got. Postpone three games. Alabama, LSU. Um, I just said Auburn. What's what, Who did I say? Auburn, Mississippi State. Auburn, Mississippi State. Alabama, LSU. Alabama. I have the look. I'm just gonna look at my ESPN notifications for days. It's not telling me the third one. Hello. Anywho, a lot of games canceled this week. Yeah, a this lot is, of games no, postponed. College football is kind of crumbling. It is quickly at, at the same time that, which obviously makes sense because you know college football is in a bubble. They go to school. They probably see people outside the football. Georgia, team. Missouri, Georgia, Missouri, Tennessee, Texas. Oh yeah, the Missouri game. In Texas A&M is number five right now. Right, right. So it's it's tough because, um, I mean, this is the risk that you know was was had when we 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 decided that college football would be okay. Um, we, as in the college football society, uh, you know, it, it's a tough situation because we still, this is a novel virus. This is new. This isn't the flu. This isn't the common cold. This is something we've never seen before. We don't know long-term health effects. So you're hoping that there aren't a lot. And these, you know, people in football programs that have been hit with it so hard, whether it be LSU, whether it be Wisconsin, um, whether it be hopefully not Maryland, turns into something like Wisconsin, right? 
it's it's a tough situation. So we, you know, we'll continue to see it's an evolving situation, but you hope for the best for everybody involved. Um, and you hope for an end in sight sometime soon uh, with the COVID-19 pandemic. That's all we've been hoping for since March. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm worried for college football. Um, yeah, it's a tough situation, man. Like, you, you come into it and... It's it's hard. You knew this was probably gonna happen. Yeah. And now it's happening. And and not only the the crazy thing is that even the Big Ten, who has the best testing protocol in the nation, is is hit with it. Um, it's not something you can avoid. The only way you could completely avoid it is not playing football. Yeah. Powers that be have made that evidently clear that that is not an option. Uh, nor will that be an option, even if this is a thing next year, um, because they have already semi successfully pulled it off this year. So we'll see. We'll see, man. You just hope for the health of all these student athletes. But uh, tomorrow, Gabby and Josh will likely be here. Maybe we'll switch it up for the third time this week. Who knows? You know, I run the show. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry for me, for Gabby. Uh, this has been Alana Drive on 107.1 WPG.